Hello and welcome to the shed. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to flatten the sole of a hand plane. Hope you enjoy. So when it comes to flattening the sole of these hand planes, you can get extremely nitpicky and you really don't need to. As long as it's close enough to being flat and you've got some key areas, which I'll show you in a little bit, that you want flat. And the more flatness you get in those areas, the better it's going to operate. But you don't need to go down to one one thousandth of an inch sort of thing or a fraction of a millimetre when getting these hand planes flat because that little bit of discrepancy you're not even ever going to notice that on your work or in my opinion you're never going to notice it. You can get very nitpicky and you can come in with your, your machine squares and check for flatness. You can use uh, machine straight edges like this one here but you, you really don't need to. So today we're going to do a very basic and quick way of flattening it and it's just going to be really beginner friendly and we're not going to get too technical about it. So let me get set up here. We'll jump in here and I'll explain how we're going to go about it and the key areas that we want flat on the hand plane. So obviously when flattening the base of a plane you've probably heard that you can get machined blocks for flattening them that are accurate to you know, 0 0.0001 of an inch or something like that. And it's it's really not necessary. I just use some melamine. Now, this melamine is flat enough for every flattening process that I've done from the smallest hand plane up to the biggest ones that I've done. So what we do is we just attach this down to the bench, hold it nice and flat, and then we attach our sandpaper to it. Now to attach that sandpaper, you can use double-sided tape, uh, if you're using double-sided tape, just this thin stuff that I've got here, um, which I'll show you a close-up of in a minute, uh, works perfectly for that. Or you can use spray adhesive. Now, I don't like to use the spray adhesive on the melamine because that becomes quite difficult to get off. We want to make it nice and easy. I use this particular sandpaper here. This is a 120 grit. And 120 grit is what I tend to use for all my hand plane flattening. As you go through the flattening process, the sandpaper, because it's uh, sort of quite rough, it ends up being a much finer sandpaper. So by the time you've finished, it's probably less coarse than, say, a 240 grit sandpaper, which would be my ultimate finish on a hand plane. So I've just got two strips here stuck down with some double-sided tape. There's some key areas that we want to make sure we get when we're flattening it. Now, we want flatness in here ideally right through this whole area because that is our reference for when we start our hand planing so when you're pushing it down like this that's where you're referencing to start so as you're moving through if that's not flat it can affect it you want a bit flat behind the back of the mouth here and um, this slot here in the hand plane is referred to as a mouth by the way so you want it flat here and flat there and then at least some flat spots down around there so when you're pushing it on the the timber you've actually got some references here and here and if you're working on a lot of thinner stuff some reference in the middle is vital but obviously as much as you can get is what you want with this sort of thing so you're aiming for as much as you can now to determine where we've taken it off i tend to put this sort of a grid pattern on here and that gives us a good indication as to where we've removed material and where we haven't. So to make sure your blade is fully retracted. You don't want that sticking out at all. So make sure that is pulled right up so you don't hit it at all. So you can pull it all the way up as far as it'll go if you like. You don't have to, but that's what I like to do. Now what we do is we come down, place it here, and we just... Ten times back and forwards, and then we can have another look. So the areas we haven't removed it from, so if you look there, it was up here, right through there we haven't removed it, through here, and sort of through all of that we haven't removed, but we have removed it from this section here and this section here, which means that these points here were actually the high points. So then we just keep removing it and we just keep going until those key areas that I mentioned at the start are nice and flat or if the whole thing is flat, if that's what you're going for. So 
and that is now 30 times. So I know this is very shiny, so it's quite difficult to see. But once again, we've now removed out of this area here and kind of that area there. One key thing when I'm holding this, I do have my hand right around, but I'm putting the pressure down the bottom. You don't want to put a lot of excess pressure on the handle when you're doing this. You want the force down on the bottom. So try and keep your force either on the side or down here and on this handle over the top and keep your fingers down. See how this has got quite clogged now? You can see the dark color. This is the color it was originally. So if you find that the sanding, it might not, it might just be your paper's clogged. So you can come in with a brush, brush most of the clogging out and you can see that the color change here is quite dramatic. And we've gone back to sort of that slightly darkened color, but it's closer to what the original color was. And I'm gonna show you changing this out and how we go about actually putting the new sandpaper on. So because this is double-sided tape, I just pull this straight off. Now, I'm just going to do a strip, just because that's how I did it before. This, cut that off. I'm going to put two of them next to each other as I had before. Nip that off. Straighten here like this. Take the cover off that. And lie it down like that. Cut it off. Push them close together like that. So you can see there's no, I've got it as close as I can get together there. Chop it off once again. In just a few minutes on some new paper, we've actually taken it all the way down to here. So all of this up to here is done. So, and a little bit in here is done as well. So it's only really this last little bit here. And since this hasn't taken long, I'll try to flatten it. So what I'll do is I'll run some new reference lines so we can try and get an idea and just double check that we have flattened it where we think we've flattened it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can get an indication of where we've gone. We need to go a little bit further, but we are already starting to remove up here. So we are pretty accurate with where it was flattened. That was about another 50 runs. And if we look here, there's actually nothing left. We have actually removed all of the major lines all the way through, which means we have now made this completely flat. Or, at very least, flat enough to do 99.9% .9 of all woodworking that you're going to do with this. So now that we've got it to this stage, there's one last thing that I like to do once I flatten them. And you'll see a lot of people doing that, and it's called sort of fettling or easing the edges of these hand planes. Now, it's not as important on some of these vintage ones. They don't tend to have quite as sharp edges. But when you've flattened it, you can get quite sharp edges, and these sharp edges could dig in on your work. And it also means that the hand plane might not flow on a few different levels when you're actually using it. So what we're going to do now is just ease these edges on the front toe here and along these two sides. And you can also ease the edge along the back here. We want to roll these edges to ease them. So to do that, so we start flat. And it's that easy. That, that has now rolled that edge and eased it. So now I'll show you on the other side. So we start flat like this. You're not quite touching when you come this way. You're just going as far as you are to keep that off so it's only that edge touching. And then back down. And that's eased. Now, if you feel that it's not smooth enough to your liking, you can run some just some finer sandpaper up to about 600 grit along here. But I don't feel the need on this because that feels nice and smooth to me. And then to ease this edge, so did you see that? Start on that corner. I'm keeping this at about a 45 and I just roll it like that. So you're just getting this base edge, and then I just come in like this, just on a bit of a flatter edge, just to flatten it further back, and then that's done. If it feels a little rough to the touch, go ahead once again, 
put some lighter sandpaper, but you can use a file to do this work. So if it's a little bit rough, it doesn't matter too much. So on this back edge, because it has this, and I'll show you another hand plane, see how the sole comes right up here. Whereas on this one, it's recessed and thin just here. So you can't just rub that on the sandpaper like could this one. So with this one, I just get some freehand sandpaper and rub it around that angle. Concentrate on these corners because that's where I find if it's going to dig in, it'll dig in. And you just ease that around until it feels smooth. Just on about a 45 degree angle. So there you have it folks. You can see that it, it is fairly quick and easy to flatten the bottom of a hand plane. Now obviously this one was in a very good state. I hadn't flattened it before, however, it didn't really take much to flatten it and get it in a good shape ready to be used. And we were able to flatten the entire sole on this one. Now some of them you can't. This beginner one, if you've seen that, haven't seen that video, I'll leave that below. This is a Stanley Bailey sort of big box store one that we set up. Now we couldn't fully flatten this particular one, but we got 90% of the way there. But this particular hand plane from the big box store, that took about half an hour to get that one flattened because it was a little bit more out of square than this one. So I usually don't have it take too much longer than that to flatten them because these vintage hand planes are all mainly grey cast iron. So grey cast iron is quite soft, so it's usually pretty quick and easy to, to flatten them and it usually doesn't take too long. Now if you're flattening a more modern one, they're ductile cast iron or ductile steel, something like that. So that's going to be a much harder metal, so that will take longer to flatten if you've got one of them. So if you like this video and you'd like to see some more videos related to hand tool restorations or sharpening of a hand tool and fitting the chip breaker, I'll leave a couple of videos on the screen here for you. And please consider liking and subscribing to get some more great videos like the one you've just seen here today. If you want to support me a little bit further, please consider checking me out on Patreon. Bye for now.